Welcome to ZenML, the open source Python framework that takes manual machine learning tasks and puts them into a streamlined MLOps workflow so that you can focus on shipping value with your machine learning models instead of having to waste time gluing everything together. In this video, I will show you how to create your first MLOps pipeline with ZenML using your favorite tools and existing infrastructure. At the end of this video, we'll see an end-to-end -end flow which tracks all of your models and data and provides a central place for all of your data science team to work together seamlessly. Let's get started. The first step is to deploy open source ZenML or to log into ZenML Cloud, which is the managed version. After signing up, you'll be redirected through a short onboarding and afterwards be asked to create a tenant. A tenant is an isolated workspace where all of your pipelines, models, and code lives. I already have created a tenant so I can click into it. After your account is set up, all there's left to do is connect your local ZenML installation to the deployed ZenML server. In order to do that, the first thing you have to do is, of course, install ZenML locally. Create a virtual environment, pip install ZenML, and then connect using the ZenML connect command. This will establish a connection from your local CLI to the ZenML deployed server. And that's it, you're connected. All right, now the next step is to pull an example ZenML project onto our local machine so that we can start playing around with some code. I'm going to clone one of the ZenML projects straight here. And after it's cloned, I'm going to open it up in VS Code. You can use any IDE that you prefer. All right, so you can see my code here. I can see a directory of pipelines and steps. And if I click into some of the steps, for example, the data loader step, I can already see some interesting things. A ZenML step is simply a regular Python function decorated with the ZenML SDK, step decorator. If you have legacy code that you need to convert into a ZenML pipeline, all you need to do is decorate it with the step decorator. That's really how easy it is. After that, it's regular Python code. You can see in this particular case, I'm going to load in the Wisconsin breast cancer data set, which is using the sklearn library, but you can use Hugging Face, Transformers, you can use uh, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow. It's really up to you. It's normal Python code, just as you're used to. A ZenML step is used in so-called ZenML pipelines. Let's look at a pipeline. This is the training pipeline. And a training pipeline is also decorated with the add pipeline decorator, which is then used to call these steps together into a coherent directed acyclic graph. So that's really how easy it is, just these two functions really. And then we can call this in a run function, call this particular function in a run function, and we can run our first pipeline. Let's see how this goes. This command will take all of your steps one by one and execute them locally and we will see the results on the ZenML dashboard. So this will take a few minutes. We'll pause for a second and come back to it when it's done. All right, our pipeline is now done and we can go back to the dashboard and see that it's now unlocked. If I navigate over to my pipelines, I can see the pipeline that I just ran is now displayed on the dashboard. Each pipeline is automatically versioned and has is tracked for every time you run it. And with, when you click on a particular run, you see a visualization of what just happened locally on my machine in a graph. Here I can see my steps and artifacts, and I can see all the different details of all the different things that are tracked automatically by ZenML, including where it ran from, who ran it, how long it ran, and which stack it ran on. More on this later. If I click on a particular step, let's look at the data loader step that we saw earlier. I can see all of the details of it of how long it took, the code that ran, this is the one that we saw in the VS code earlier, its logs, so all the logs that it produced, and the different configuration that was used to configure it. Um, in this case, also, we know the parameters that were passed to it as the pipeline ran. Steps produce artifacts. Artifacts are automatically versioned data sets that are produced by your pipelines. ZML automatically versions your data as it goes through the pipeline and tells you where it's stored, all the metadata associated with it, like shapes, statistics, and size. And you can even visualize your data set. 
Once we are happy with our pipeline locally, we might want to scale up to the cloud to get more resources. This will of course vary and depend on your production infrastructure, but the good thing is that ZenML comes with many infrastructure infra integrations out of the box. You can connect your infrastructure by registering a so-called stack, which is the configuration of your cloud infrastructure that ZenML understands. There are just a few commands on the CLI that you need to do in order to register this stack, and it might require a little bit of cloud infrastructure know-how. You can ask your ops team in your company to help. For now, I'll be using GCP because that is the cloud provider that we use in production. But you can use any cloud provider depending on your setup. Microsoft Azure, AWS, even raw Kubernetes if you'd like. Here you can see me registering a stack on the terminal by registering an orchestrator and a container registry. I'm now combining these things together into the stack and I'm calling it the GCP stack. I'm now going to set the GCP stack as the active stack in my project and run the same commands that I ran before to run my pipeline locally. That's right, I don't need to change the code of my pipeline at all. The code remains the same and ZenML understands that now I want to run this on the cloud. Therefore, rather than running it in your virtual environment, it compiles your pipeline into a Docker image, packages it up and pushes it to your container registry and finally triggers an orchestration job in your environment. In our case, we're going to be using GCP Vertex Pipelines, which is a managed Google offering, but we can do it on SageMaker or Kubernetes or even raw VMs as discussed earlier. Let's see how this looks like. And again, this will take a few minutes. So we'll take a pause and come back once the pipeline is finished. Okay, it looks like my pipeline has been started successfully on GCP. I can navigate to my GCP environment and see that there's a new running pipeline with the same name as the ZenML pipeline. If I click into it, I can see that my first step has already been executed and it looks pretty similar to the ZenML pipeline we saw earlier. This time just running on the cloud with more resources and maybe a GPU or two. Of course, I can go over to the ZenML side and see that another run has been triggered for this pipeline on a different stack. If I click into it, I see the same visualizations as before and indeed the same code. This time packaged up into a Docker image. That's how easy it is. It's really just one click and you're running on the cloud. This helps you debug locally and transition to production very fast. As we are now at a point where we have multiple different pipelines with different runs, running on different stacks and producing many different models, it can be a bit hard and tricky to track all of this with the pipeline interface alone. Luckily, ZenML offers a model control plane. This is a central view of all of the machine learning models that are associated with ZenML pipelines. If you click into the model control plane, you can see I've called this the breast cancer classification based on my use case. And I have two versions that correspond to the two pipelines I just ran. The first one is in staging. If I click into it, I can see an overview of all of the model card information that I need for this model. The model artifacts, including the model pickle file, where it's stored, and the artifacts that were used to create it, and all the various metrics that I need as well. Of course, I can also see the pipelines that were used to create it. In this case, this was the local run that I made. Now, of course, we already saw how you could store a lot of information in ZenML itself, like metrics and accuracies, but the, one of the best things about ZenML is it integrates into all of your favorite tools. For example, ZenML integrates into all of the popular experiment tracking tools like MLflow and Weights and Biases. So here in the metadata, I can also see my experiment tracking URL, which links me to my MLflow experiment, which is tied to my ZenML pipelines. I can see here all of the pipelines I ran, my metrics as well, and my parameters. So if I have advanced visualizations and comparisons I want to do, I can use MLflow or Weights and Biases or any other tool that I like. I don't need to let go of my favorite tools in order to use ZenML. Once I've seen the metrics of my model and I'm happy with it, I can now promote it to production. This is as simple as tagging it as the production stage through the ZenML dashboard. This means that this version of the pipeline is ready to be deployed. In order to deploy this model, I can switch back and run my deployment pipeline. 
This will run a deployment pipeline and deploy this machine learning model as an endpoint locally on my machine. In order to achieve this, ZenML integrates with model deployment tools like Bento ML and Selden. And you can do this locally, but of course, also in the cloud. Now, when I run my deployment pipeline, the model that was marked as production is picked up by ZenML and deployed to production. You can see now my service is starting and in a few seconds, my model will be available locally for me to send requests to. Okay, so my model got deployed locally. And if I navigate back to my ZenML dashboard, I can see that it's registered as a service here in the ZenML dashboard again, the central source of truth. I can now click into my URI and see my prediction service here deployed. Let's try to make request to it. I just need to copy a sample data point straight into this interface and see what happens. Yeah, perfect. It returned me a successful response. That finishes the entire MLOps loop from training to deployment using ZenML. You use different stacks, different infrastructures, different tools, but you were able to train and deploy locally and on the cloud. Now that you've seen ZenML in action, it's your turn to streamline your MLOps processes for your team. Simply pip install ZenML and get started. On the onboarding checklist, you'll see a 10 minute setup to get started. And if you happen to get stuck or have any questions at all, then join our Slack community. I'll see you there.